Hey, I'm Hassan, and welcome to Retro Revive. Today, I have a very special iPhone 3G running a very different version of iPhone OS. Before the video starts, I would greatly appreciate if you subscribed, as it helps out the channel a lot and motivates me to continue. Okay, on with the video. Hey, I'm Hassan, and welcome to Retro Revive. Today, I have an iPhone 3G running a very special firmware called White Door 7. Well, what is White Door, you may be asking? White Door is a modified version of iPhone OS 3, which is made to mimic iOS 7 in both visuals and features. The project began all the way back in 2010 as a way to bring the iOS 4 experience to the original iPhone and iPod Touch, which had their final OS release of iPhone OS 3. They delivered the first version, simply referred to as the beta firmware, on June 14, 2010. It wasn't given the White Door name until a few days later. As time progressed, the White Door team made revisions to their firmware. They released White Door 5 and 6 in the coming years based on iOS 5 and 6 respectively. They even added support for the iPhone 3G and iPod Touch 2nd generation when those devices had their support ended with iOS 4. At the end of 2013, the White Door team had released White Door 7, the final major revision of White Door. This was the biggest update yet due to the iOS 7 visual design that was brought forward with this update. Yep, translucency and everything. Unfortunately, in recent time, not much has happened with the White Door project. There have been some minor updates to White Door 7 which change UI elements and icons to mimic even newer versions of iOS, but besides that, really nothing major. On November 23rd, 2019, the White Door Twitter account announced a new version of White Door called White Door Classic, and it was made to mimic iOS 4 through 6, but as of 2023, nothing has been released of the project. That brings us to today. The White Door project is officially no longer being maintained, but that does not mean it is gone forever. The download link is still hosted on SourceForge, meaning we can take a look at one of the coolest firmwares released for the iPhone. Let's begin with the visuals. The design of the OS at first glance is exactly like iOS 7. The menus and apps have been pretty much entirely stripped of all skeuomorphism. As previously mentioned, there are even translucency effects. Here is the translucent dock for an example. Unfortunately, with a project this ambitious, there are going to be some issues. Not everything is one-to-one, -one, and there are some visual bugs and remnants of stock iOS left behind. For example, here is the passcode lock. The flat visual element is present, but it is off-center and looks nothing like iOS 7. Worst of all, here is the stocks app. Yeah, I, I honestly have nothing else to say. But honestly, this seems excusable. There was a clear level of effort put into the project, and I have to applaud the developers because what they managed to accomplish is very impressive. Now let's take a look at some of the new features. Let's start with folders. Folders were not a part of iPhone OS 3, but here they are backported and rescanned by the White Door team. You may have noticed that these are in fact the folders from iOS 4, which means they won't go beyond a set number of apps, but it's clear they did their best to make it fit in with the iOS 7 visual style. Another new feature is the control center, which entirely mimics the one seen in iOS 7. It acts as expected, but the thing that caught my eye was the flashlight option. It makes the screen white and maxes out the brightness. It isn't going to be the brightest, but it is a smart idea nonetheless. Also added is Siri, or Sarah? Yes, this is a custom version of Siri known as Sarah, but for whatever reason, Sarah no longer works. And sadly, Sarah is probably going to be unfixable for reasons I'll get into later in the video. A video recording option was also added, and thanks to this demonstration, it is clear why Apple did not include a video recording option until later on in the iPhone's life. But in all seriousness, it's really cool that this feature was included despite its poor quality. Simply knowing the iPhone 3G is capable of recording video is pretty cool. Assistive touch was also added, and while it's not as featureful as its iOS counterpart, it still gets the job done. Another feature is push notifications. I don't have an app to demonstrate how it works, but here are some pictures of what it looks like. It's pretty close to the real thing. And to end off this section with my personal favorite is the app switcher. Why is it my favorite? It's because in White Door, instead of just swiping up, you can swipe up and down, and honestly this is probably my most used feature. Overall, the amount added was very impressive. It makes iPhone OS 3 very fun and feature-rich. The App Store is very notable due to a now-defunct service called the App Time Machine. It used to be a service that allowed you to download pre-downgraded apps. 
but it had shut down in recent years, which forces you to sideload apps now. I actually used it around seven years ago, and it functioned pretty well. There were lots of games and other types of applications, and best of all, they were all free, even the paid ones. I'm not sure how legal that is, but it was pretty cool. One other thing you may have noticed is that Cydia comes pre-installed on Whiteboard. Cydia also once worked, but it has since stopped working on iPhone OS 2 and 3. On a normally jailbroken version of iPhone OS 3, Cydia is fixable, but on White Door, I was only having issues. I tried using iFunbox to directly install the .dev file for a newer version of Cydia, and that didn't even work. The app is not updatable on White Door, and I can't even say if it works properly because it appears to install things, but then they don't work, and it's very confusing. But you're not watching this video to hear me complain about my issues with Cydia. What does this mean for you? If you do want to use Cydia and install extra tweaks, I wouldn't recommend installing White Door. If you do want to jailbreak iPhone OS 3, it's best to just do it on a stock version. That is why I couldn't fix Sarah earlier in the video. But it's not the end of the world. If you can actually find .deb files for tweaks that you want, you can manually install them using iFunbox. I found a small archive on the Momentum Dev store, and I'll link it below. Not much is included, but it's enough to get you started. Unfortunately, I have more bad news. White Door slows down the iPhone 3G quite a bit. It's not a crazy amount, but it's enough to make the phone feel a little clunky. It's passable to my standards, but everyone is different. The slowdown is to be anticipated due to the sheer amount of features being added to iPhone OS 3. You can speed up the device by actually disabling some visuals and features, but in my opinion it feels like you're taking away from the White Door experience. So unfortunately, performance versus experience is something you may have to decide between. Overall, White Door 7 is a really cool piece of jailbreaking history. It's really cool to see how much effort can go into a project, because this is by far one of the most ambitious iOS projects ever. It's also nice to see people keep these old phones alive. I think it's always better to have these devices out and about instead of rotting in a cabinet somewhere. It gives users fun projects to embark on, gives devices more of a purpose in the modern day, and overall just reduces e-waste. If you have an iPhone 2G or 3G or an iPod Touch 1st or 2nd generation, I highly recommend installing White Door. I'll even be making a guide on how to install it. And with that, we've made it to the end of the video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment, and as always, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.